Welcome back everybody to Sasquatch Performance Garage. Today we're going to be working on my 17 GT350 again. Uh, recently got a little bit of a modification, a little upgrade. Uh, something that I feel like pretty much every car nowadays should probably have. Uh, kind of a disappointment almost that it, you know, the uh, GT350 as a you know higher end model vehicle didn't come with these. We are going to be doing hood struts. Get rid of the hood prop rod, along with you know making a little more aesthetically pleasing, uh, and just kind of like a, I guess productivity wise, you know it's just a little bit easier. You know, pop the hood and it goes up on its own versus having to do the hood prop rod and all that. You know, granted, there's not a lot of time to do that, but you know every little bit counts. You know, when it makes it easy. But that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. We're gonna go ahead and get started on this. Uh, we're gonna pop the hood, start working on undoing the top bolts of the hinges and uh, gonna be doing some measuring, making sure that we get it all done right here. Uh, I do have here the red line tuning, so these do require a little bit of drilling. Um, and I'll document everything along the way, let you guys know how it works, uh, so you can make uh, good decisions on your own. This kit is a GT3, GT350 specific kit, um, but you know this would be kind of like a whole normal, all S550s, pretty much 15 through uh, 22, so. Let's get on it. All right, so I start by opening up the hood. I then take off the top nut of each hinge on each on either side of the hood. Uh, from there, I then put the bracket on. The brackets are labeled uh, passenger side and driver side. The passenger side does have that one little hole for the washer fluid uh, hose. I then tighten down the nut, uh, hand tight. I haven't tightened it all the way down yet. All right, we got our first step done here. It is putting on the hinges. Your passenger side is gonna be the one you kinda, you don't really have to worry about, but it's just got a little extra step of making sure that that washer fluid uh, line gets done. It's just put in there with like a little Christmas tree uh, retainer. You can pull that one out pretty easily. I was actually able to do it by hand without even damaging it. Uh, then just line it up with your hinge and tighten down the bracket and then you can put that. There is a hole in these red line tuning brackets right where the washer fluid retainer goes or the washer fluid line retainer goes. Uh, so you can put it right back into its factory spot there. Here I use the template to mark off the hole that we're going to drill. Uh, once I get that marked off, it does line up pretty well with the factory lines on the battery cover. I then take out the four push pins and take it off, bring it to the bench. So I'm going to start off with a few different, I'm going to drill a small pilot hole. Uh, it's one of the smallest drill bits that I have. Uh, I want to do that to kind of make sure that I'm not going to mess anything up. So I am working on kind of like my outside bench here. A uh, little dirty, please don't judge on that. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, go right on my mark that I had here. Got our first little one done, and I'm like I said, I'm gonna make a few steps up before I go to that step bit that the kit came with. All right, so the first step on this step drill bit's a quarter, so I'm gonna go all the way up to quarter inch here make it easy for that step bit to just go right down in there and I'm going to drill it all the way out to three quarter. Nice and slow and smooth. Oops, there we go. All right, time to go ahead and put the step bit in. And we're going all the way to three quarter. Three quarter is going to be pretty much all the way to the very top of this thing. So we're going to start here and go all the way up through it. I'm going to go ahead and pull it off to the side here since I already got a good pilot going. Uh, I don't want to drill a hole all the way through my table here. So I'm going to go ahead and support it on the back end. burrs off of it. Perfect. 
nice, perfect little hole. No burrs or anything like that. That drill bit worked pretty good. And again, going nice, slow, and smooth is going to help you out tremendously on that one. At this point, I'm putting in the bottom bracket. The passenger side is actually what we drilled that hole for, where the strut pops onto the ball of the bracket. All right, so did the passenger side already. Side notes I'm gonna give you guys uh, to kind of make it a little bit easier. So first instinct was to try to put it in this way with the bracket and the attachment or little clamp, clamp right here. Uh, parallel to each other you need to go perpendicular that's really gonna be the easiest way to get it into that hole to be able and not have uh, any interference uh, also unscrew this pretty well you don't want to unscrew it all the way obviously you don't want to drop this thing in there but uh, once you get it in there I then made sure that I kept applying force up on the bracket because it does have little steps here that you want to be able to put in uh, and if you just let the bracket sit down on the frame rails. That little guy's just gonna spin and spin and spin. You're not gonna be able to tighten it up and it won't be in the proper orientation. That little step right there is supposed to fit directly into the upper frame rail there, little hole in there. So kept it up and then slowly tighten this down with my hand so it stays up in the hole. I get the driver's side bottom bracket put on. Then I pop the hood struts onto those brackets. Uh, from there, I look to see what, if we have any interference with that. All right, so we got our struts on our upper frame rail uh, or fender uh, attached. You always want to put the rod in down on these. It says it directly in the instructions, but make sure you guys are doing that. Um, from there, uh, this is where you might want a little helpful hand. Um, I do not have a helpful hand at the moment. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lift up the hood with one arm and put the second rod on there right now because currently it does not fit. Uh, it is just the rod's a little bit longer than what uh, fits on the hood. So I'm going to lift it up ever so slightly and make sure that we have proper clearance for everything, uh, especially back here. And we will go from there. All right. So got it all taken care of. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the hood prop rod just for aesthetics. Um, you know, I can keep it there, but I'm gonna remove it to see what it looks like, see if I like it. If not, I'll just put it right back on. It's one simple bolt, but got it all ready to go. Super easy, super, all right, sorry, super easy, super clean install. Um, have no problems with it. I haven't shut the hood yet, so we're gonna check that here shortly, but something, kind of embarrassing that uh, I don't know how I haven't seen this before yet on this vehicle but when I was working on it just now I noticed that there was that little tool right there um, that's a wiper arm remover and I don't know how I haven't seen it because like shortly after I bought the vehicle I changed the air filter um, don't know how I did it don't know how I've seen it but kind of a crappy situation because put a little bit of a, like some rust marks right there but also a lot worse put a little scratches and dings on my hood there so really you know crappy I mean it's not the worst thing in the world I mean the actual air box cover or, or the the air box insulation right here actually makes a line on the hood so it's not you know it's just Shelby things, I guess, but that little bit extra right there kind of pisses me off. Again, I don't know how that happened. Uh, I actually haven't even taken this car anywhere to get any work on other than tires. All right, so while I'm editing this video, I remembered where that wiper arm tool came from. I got a chip in the windshield while driving one day, and it cracked across the windshield. Because of that, I took it to a uh, glass place. Uh, I'll leave them nameless for the time being and uh, you know got the windshield replaced so that's where that tool came from and that was shortly before I did this install so uh, that's where it came from mystery solved it's still really annoying that some tech just left his tools on my car and you know damaged it so yeah get back to the video 
we're pretty much all good to go. I'm going to go ahead and shut the hood, uh, check everything out, operate it a few times, make sure everything's good to go. All right, so we are done. I operated the hood a few times. Feels a little uh, scary the first time, you know, having some force back uh, from trying to push the hood down or pull the hood down. Um, it did look kind of loosened up already a little bit, so that's a good thing. I just don't want it to turn into like one of those old school Chevy truck hinges where if you don't do it just right, the freaking hood bends in half. Um, he's got a lot of ribbing it looks like, so we shouldn't be, we should be okay with that. But uh, here's my hood prop rod. I'm gonna put this in the garage, keep it for safekeeping. Uh, again, you know, I'm gonna see how it, how it looks, how it feels out. Um, but overall, guys, super easy install. I hope what I brought out to you guys here on this video kind of shows you what's going on with it, uh, how to do it. Super easy, so you don't have to worry about anything again. The only modification to this car that I had to do to put these on is the three quarter inch hole on the battery cover, which in all reality isn't bad. It looks pretty good. Um, as you guys saw in the video, I you know I got a little close up on there to see what it looks like. Uh, I did end up also cutting from that hole out to the edge uh, just for easy or ease of use when I have to change the battery on this vehicle which I know will be sometime soon. It's got a Motocraft battery in there, um, which is an original battery, but it's not the original battery. Uh, when we had a little bit of a cold snap, I did kind of see it starting to slow down a little bit as far as cranking, so it's gonna happen sooner or later. So I just wanna be pre proactive about it. We're gonna close the chapter on this. And guys, I appreciate you watching. Please consider subscribing to Sasquatch Performance Garage, and I will see y'all next time.